Hello, guys. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Do you hear me, guys? Do you have my voice? Please type yes if you hear me. Hello. Wow, that's interesting. That's great. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining to this live session. Uh, it's great to see you again and to be with you guys and uh, talking to you. It's a great opportunity for me to uh, make these kind of live sessions. Uh, so today we have a very, very special guest from China. Uh, I, I, I don't think he needs an introduction. Everybody, I think, knows about him. Uh, we all know about their wor his works, uh, his crazy works, <laughs> and all the great projects that, that they are sh uh, showing and uh, putting out there on social media. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so his name is Ma yes, Yan Song. He's the founder and principal of Mad Architects, uh, or better to say MAD Architects from China, Beijing-based practice. And uh, uh, we've seen a lot of great work from them. In a couple of minutes, I will invite him to join to this live session. Just to stay with me. Uh, also, I would like to add that uh, you can just ask your questions during the live sessions. Uh, please write your questions in that question button and that question mark. Like uh, there's a box over there, write your questions over there. I will ask them from Ma. And uh, even uh, in the live sessions or after the, my question ends, I will ask all of your questions. So stay tuned with me. I'm just inviting Ma in. Okay. Let's go. Hello. Hi. Hi, Ma. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much. Thanks for joining to this live session. Yeah, that's great. Pleasure. That's great to see you here. Uh, we're so excited about this interview. Uh, we've seen all of, all of your works, or your architecture. Uh, they're all amazing. We requested for an interview. Thank, Thank you. you that you accepted it. Uh, to start, do you have any word to say to our followers? Or say hello, hello, everyone. Yeah, this is my first time doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, a, it's a fun. Uh, uh, um, I'm, I'm Ma Yensong. I'm an architect from Beijing, uh, Mad Architects. Um, very good to talk to you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll go straight to my uh, questions and start the interview. Uh, first of all, could you please introduce yourself and your office, MAD Architects? Is it called MAD or MAD Architects? Uh, and, we, call, uh... we call both. <laughs> we call both. both. Yeah. yeah. Well, what does um, it mean? <laughs> oh, people always ask. Um, okay. But I think I like uh, MAD. MAD has a kind of attitude. You know, it's a, you, you don't right. recognize that's architect's office. <laughs> that's, a, right. that's, a, uh, that's a very funny name. Um, <laughs> I, I, exactly. I think, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we, we use both. We started uh, uh, 2004, um, so 16 years ago in Beijing. Um, now we're, you know, we're working with uh, a lot of young architects all over the world and uh, with uh, also projects in, in different countries. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, so uh, how did you choose to become an architect well what is the story of becoming, a, becoming an architect i like to draw when i was a kid you know i i, I go to a classroom and i do my things on my table i, I draw all, all different things and uh, and when i uh, try to apply the college i want to become a filmmaker actually I, I applied the film academy and and then they they refused me they, they said, uh, you, you, you don't uh, draw uh, good enough, uh, but wow. you can be architect. 
Okay. Because, <laughs> because as an architect, you have to, you know, you have to be able to draw, but not, you don't have to be a real artist. I think that, <laughs> that's the moment I, I started to, to, to see architecture. I didn't uh, know what architecture about because, because at that time in Beijing, we just started uh, um, urbanization. So there's mm -hmm. not many new buildings. I can see new building, new architecture from magazines but not uh, in real life. I, I only see old uh, architecture, like uh, old Chinese gardens, like uh, pavilions. So I thought architects, maybe you're supposed to make those the wood structure. Um, I don't know, but I applied the architecture school after. Maybe, I, maybe since then I, I treat architecture as a, as a film. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I, I see each right. product as a, as an example to, to, you know, to start some narratives or to, to express your imagination uh, to other yes. people, you know. But, but architects, you always work behind the scene, right? The, you show the, the, your, your buildings, your space, but you're, you're not in, uh, on the stage. I like exactly. that feeling. Exactly. Are you satisfied of your decision that you chose <clears throat> to be an architect? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I mean. If you you see architecture as a form of art, I think that's very fun, right? Because you can, you can, you can continue discover yourself um, through years, and you will find always find some new you inside of you, right? And you can always <laughs> find something new, and then you will uh, see how you. Um, uh, interact with that uh, finding, so that right. that for me is very very interesting. I, actually, when I start uh, learning architecture, I, re I read a book, a book in Chinese book. It's a it's a story. Uh, it's a book about one hundred stories about one hundred different architects. That was a very fun book. I didn't. That that's for me. Maybe maybe that's equals to architecture history, uh, because it tells. Their, their background, their, you know, their, where they come from, their culture, and they, they show all different kinds of architecture. As a, I, I, I realized, oh, you can do anything. You, you, can, you can do this at the beginning, and then later you do something else. <laughs> That's very right. fun. And uh, I, I also find, find people living in the same era, uh, same, uh, same time, but they're doing totally different things. There's a no right, right, no wrong. Um, so I find this, oh, this is a good, um, good way to, 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 yeah. Profession. Great. So I'll ask about pandemic period. So China was the first um, country that hit by pandemic and literally, uh, offices like you, uh, architectural offices, practices like you were facing these kind of stuff, like these kind of situations for <clears> the first time, how it affected your office. So. Uh, how did you react to like your re working remotely or anything? How did you react to your office? Uh, we just miss each other. You know, we <laughs> um, <laughs> at the beginning because we didn't know how long this is gonna last. Uh, we yes. thought maybe this will end in one month, and then that was the Chinese New Year. We were thinking, oh, maybe after the New New Year holiday, everyone will come back. But uh, right. then the, the, this situation gets worse and worse. Um, and then we start to holding these uh, online parties, you know, because of, every <laughs> week we have a, we having party in the office. Every Friday we're having this uh, happy hour. Happy we hour, to do right. This <laughs> online, having drinks. Um, awesome. But then we have to learn how to work remotely from each other. And some people now, uh, going back Beijing and uh, they start to work in the office, but still a lot of people, because they're coming from other country, they couldn't come. So now they, everyone work uh, at home and <laughs> in different time zone. So that's a, right. uh, for me, it's a very, very normal because uh, before this, even before this, I was traveling uh, a lot. So I, I work with uh, our team member um, on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> very often, and now, and now we 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 doing this more frequently. I think this really 
change the way we're working. Also, the our relationship with our clients. And we work with we yeah. work with uh, many government, and uh, they all start to using all these different uh, uh, video conference, um, you know, to 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 do meetings and discussions. Um, I I find it more efficient actually. That's yeah. great. Um, yeah, and maybe after this, we don't have to travel uh, so much. Maybe that's more uh, environmental friendly. You know, taking less airplanes. You know, so many things we can we can do it uh, online. Yeah, how do you think it will affect architecture in the future and our relationships? Our like uh, up in the upcoming years, how it will affect our lifestyles? This pandemic. You know, I I saw a very funny uh, comic. Uh, it says, "No, we think this virus." Is hurting the earth, but it's actually healing the earth, right? So <laughs> the earth was damaged by by human being because of right. some some issues we didn't take care of very well. So the problem happened. Um, right. So at least in during this period, for me now I'm traveling um, around the China because uh, you know I if I go to go back Beijing uh, last week. Uh, they will right. put me in the hotel for 14 days. So now I'm traveling in other <laughs> around the China, meeting the clients, meeting, uh, look look at the construction sites. So right. this actually, uh, for me, is a, it's a very good opportunity to look at many small villages, beautiful nature. Uh, I mean, we always talking about the nature in the city, but uh, when you actually enter this nature, it's really beautiful, and I, I never had this uh, chance to do this before. So I think after pandemic, and people will look at the nature in a very different way. Like people now, we're talking about the social distance, right? It's a, a, but we always talking about how to make good public space. But what what that mean? The, the public space in China meaning more people, uh, because I mean. I, I notice even very poor quality public space can be full of people in China because there's a, there's just a population there. Yeah. You know, the, so <laughs> so maybe when we talk about public space, the quality becomes more important. Like what you do right. in this public space. Same uh, same for the space for this relationship online. You know. Same for the for the for 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 the uh, for this nature the village. Uh, how how uh, people from from city how they see the see this uh, village and nature, so I think everything we will um, um, look at them in very different ways. I I think now this couple of days I was in the village. I I even don't want to go back city anymore. And um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, but also I think in in the in the village you don't need architecture. I mean people. People, you know, learn how 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 to deal with their environment from their experience for for, for long term. And um, um, yeah, I think I think um, it's opportunity for us to look at our world in, in different angles. Right. You talked about nature and architecture and the relationship between human and nature and. You always said about uh, bringing nature inside the cities and uh, integrating with humans. So how do you think this is possible in large scale projects inside the cities and uh, to maintain uh, like uh, this idea in the heart of the cities? And how do you think this man-made nature and landscape uh, will like uh, provide the feeling of real nature to users? I think it, it, they can't. I mean, the real nature is a beautiful. The, the real nature um, can bring you many, many feelings. But the city is a different. The city is a man-made. But I think when we talk about the, uh, the nature in the city, that meaning how can we find that uh, spiritual, emotional quality in this architecture, man-made world? It's, a, it's, a, it's a two different things. Um, 
also, I, I don't think this feeling has anything to do with the scale. I think um, if you go to ocean or desert, the scale can be huge, can be you know larger than any buildings, actually. So I don't think uh, it's a problem to express that through architecture. Um, the problem is in, in our city, the, the buildings become machine, functional, mechanical, um, volumes or, or spaces um, to use, but they, they have right. less a spiritual quality with, with the people who live in the city. I think that spirit we should uh, learn from the nature and see how can we express that in the architecture in different scales. But sometimes we can put it in the small art in your room. Sometimes it can be a garden. Like, like if you look at the traditional Chinese architecture, Japanese gardens, they do that in that scale. But what about the larger scale? If we have to do towers, you know, big, uh, big buildings now, I think, I think there must be a way, you know, to, well, you create architecture, you also create the, the landscape, the, the right. feelings or the emotions, you know, things like this. Um, you, you don't have to put the trees. For example, desert is a beautiful. There's no tree. Ocean, the horizon, sometimes beautiful. Sky, uh, maybe sometimes it's a rock. One rock in the on on the ground is beautiful. Like this, this kind of emotions, not not uh, uh, not ha doesn't have to be uh, a tree or, or or green. Right. So how do you respond for the, so what is the role of architect in here? Because uh, the people are, who are living in cities these days, uh, the cities don't meet the requirements of uh, like its users, its citizens, and everybody is just trying to escape the city, go outside, to go to the nature, experience the uh, nature, I don't know, sea, desert, jungle, I don't know. And <laughs> how architect can provide that feeling inside the city? Is it possible or not? Is, is it, is, is, should, should we put a line between the nature and the city and just divide them? And just if we say, for example, if you need to feel like uh, sea, you should go to sea, not inside the city. What is the role of architect to provide uh, this feeling inside the city? I don't know, I think, I mean, I, I think I don't see everyone escaping from the city. I, I think there's still a lot of people moving to the city from the countryside. I mean, the people exchanging. That make, maybe that make you, uh, make the, the world complete. You know, the, the nature, the city, is two different things. I think the question is not one place, another. I think the, the issue is how can we build a better city, right? The, the city, I, but but on the other hand, I think city has a, the nature of the city is that you have to compromise <laughs> because because right. so many people working together live together, you sacrifice for for other people and the most people you know have to discuss how to do things. Um, Sometimes I think oh Beijing was beautiful, Kyoto was beautiful. Uh, who who planned the city? I mean. Obvious, there there was a no, um, I don't know, um, discussion like uh, you know, everyone uh, say something, <laughs> everyone discuss that. I think there's some scholar or or monk, you know they. Right. Uh, I mean they 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 treat the city planning, the architecture as a, as the greatest uh, you know top philosophy. The way they they show how today we call utopia like how they see the extreme way of right. living like how how this living can be so spiritual that they feel okay this is a city worth building it through 100 years so i think uh, that's the i don't know i like we, we like those cities uh, now we see those as a cultural heritage right because because they were so extreme but now it's a different i think now people discussing, that people talk. And um, I don't know, I, I don't know, the, 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 the city should uh, 
satisfy most people, but at the same time, uh, will you know make people um, hurt because because right. you cannot agree on everything with uh, a lot of people. Yeah, I think that's the nature of the city. You have, I mean, people living in the city have to know how to deal with it. Right, right. <laughs> so uh, these days, there's a lot of projects are being uh, built in China. Like uh, every architect from all parts of the world are uh, building in China and designing for its context. And uh, we see massive projects, we see great projects and in different styles, in different scales. How do you, uh, how, what is your comment for this situation? And uh, what are your thoughts about the projects that are coming to life in China? Do they belong to China, do you think? With its culture, with its... Most of them are, are um, located in the big cities. Um, yes. I think, um, I think that's, that's, they, I think so far China is still the the most uh, open place in the world from my experience because I also work in Europe I also work in Japan also the uh, the states um, we're building this Lucas Museum in Los Angeles that's very open cultural culturally very open city um, but from my experience mm, I, I, I still feel more space in China, like uh, the freedom they give to architects. So I always encourage international architects come to China to work. But, but uh, being architects in any situation, I think the main challenge is for long term, what benefit you can bring to the place. Right? Because uh, finishing one, one building is easy. Um, how your idea, your concept can help a place um, after say 10 years, 20 years. Um, I think that's what uh, China needs because that's, this, right now it's, uh, you know, this uh, urbanization, it's very fast and making China making mis many mistakes as well. So many new ideas coming. Um, when you doing one project very successful and the second successful, third, when you start to do different projects in the same place, that means your, your building is meaningful to the people, to the place. Um, right. So, so also I, I think it doesn't matter where you, you do a project, you have to be uh, proud of it, right? So as a, as a, as a architect. Right. <laughs> um, so I think uh, China in general give us space for everyone. Uh, I noticed uh, recent years there are also many state uh, state uh, projects also giving to young Chinese architects. That's very good. Also, a lot of Chinese architects they they choose to work in the in the small cities uh, on the small projects. Maybe they think that's that's a way they can be dealing with uh, people's daily life um, mm -hmm. more. They think maybe that's more meaningful. That's a, that's a personal choice. Um, but I find in, in China, there's still many opportunity and dealing with the different issues, uh, no matter in the city, in the, in, in, you know, in the village, in the countryside, the social housing, uh, museum, opera house, there, there are different, uh, um, different challenges. Challenges, right. Um, challenges, I think. Uh, it, but I think uh, this this really attract me at least. I think that should tra attract a lot of uh, young architects around the world. Um, for example, the, the we, recently we are, we we did uh, one social housing. That's my first time to do that. It looks uh, really different from my other works. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know everything they have to control the budget, everything, and you have to dealing with uh, the society and. Uh, but I, I, I did this research on the social housing right. globally. I find many places, Europe, Japan, they, they have a many good uh, uh, residential buildings. But in right. China, you know, we, we're building the, the most residential around the world. You know, we've built <laughs> all these towers everywhere, every city, like, uh, like uh, uh, huge 
amount, but really lacking of a random uh, innovation. They're, they all look uh, similar. So what, something wrong with it. You know, there's, there's still a lot of a uh, space, you know, for, for, um, for architects to, to challenge. Yeah. Uh, I would like to get, uh, were you continuing or? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I would like to get a question from one of our followers. Uh, I will just pop it up here. Okay. Yellow white paper asks, what is the most challenging project you, you done so far? You've done so far. Um, every project when you started, every project when you started, you, you are lacking of experience. We win the first pro project when I was uh, 28 or something. Wow. 28 years old. Right? It was Why a tower. I never <laughs> built any tower before. Oh, how to build a tower? I don't know. But uh, you, you know, you work with people. You you express your your vision, and then right. you just uh, go forward. But recently, we're working on this uh, really ambitious project in a city called Qizhou. It's a sports uh, park. It's a. Uh, um, is, is it in stadium. China? It's in China. It's in China. Okay. It's it's a huge. Uh, it's a huge land, and they want to build a sports park with a stadium, with a swimming pool, with all these uh, huge buildings like Olympic uh, Village, right. uh, Olympic Parks. And, uh, and then we buried all this building into mountains. You know, those, uh, you don't yes. see buildings. You see these um, green volca volcanoes in the city. It's in mm -hmm. the city center. Mm -hmm. so, so the whole uh, space become a park. And the park, it, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's not only green park, it's, it's uh, land art because they, they look like a big volcano mountains and people can go up, they can climb these uh, buildings. Uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's really ch challenging how to uh, deal with, deal yeah. with this uh, uh, structure because every building is a long span inside and how you can put the green on top of it, and how can you bury the load and maintain all these greens? So it's uh, it's there's, there's uh, uh, you never see this scale before in any other projects. So, right. Uh, but at the beginning, we decided to do this. We roughly know maybe sixty percent knowing we can do it. <laughs> then, <laughs> then, then this pressure always on on your on your head. <laughs> and then you keep doing research, you know, uh, finding how to, finding people, finding team, how to, uh, how to doing the test, doing experiments, how to make it a success. I, I find this the same um, path for each project. That way you can always push something uh, for each new project. I don't want to repeat, you know, I don't want to, you know, at the beginning, I know how to do this and uh, we just yes. do it. Uh, it's not uh, interesting for me. Yes. So uh, I will pop, it, pop here another question for um, one of our followers. What were you, ma your main influences for Chaoyang Park Plaza? Uh, Chaoyang Park Plaza is located in Beijing next to this uh, Chaoyang Park. It's a, like a central park in, in, in New York. It's a big uh, na nature uh, park. So our neighbor buildings always put the wall facing the park, right? But we want to build a tower. At the same time, uh, you feel this tower is a part of the nature. At the same time, this tower can bring the park, the nature environment into the city. So it's a, become the meeting point to blur the boundary in between nature and uh, artificial. So we basically make the tower look like uh, penzai. You know, I, we made the. I see this penzai. Uh, uh, you know, this uh, small stone sculpture thing. People always put on their tables with the sand and the rocks. And I see this one day. I said, we we should do this. We we make a a mo architecture model look like a penzai. Right. And <laughs> we can we can water it. We put the moose most on it and uh, and then we, we, we enlarge it become a building and so the, the building has this three uh, 
uh, profile. It's a very organic shape. Um, it looks like uh, rocks coming out of the ground. And it's a dark color. So it's a little bit remind you the, the, the ink, the ink paintings, like a black color. Um, so a lot of uh, traditional uh, art forms coming to my head when I, when I did a sketch. Um, so it's a, I think it's a larger, large scale of, uh, of uh, uh, Penzai. Right. Great. So what are your pro priorities in your projects in order to correlate like uh, uh, with users, emotions and spirituals, like in projects and uh, like uh, the Harbin Opera House? I think you answered this question. Harbin Opera House. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, it's a uh, different, uh, each project different. For the Harvey Opera House, when I, when I fly there, I see this beautiful water landscape on the ground from the, from the airplane. So it's amazing. It's a, it's a, it's a flowing around. It's really dynamic. So I thought, oh, I cannot make object there. A anything I do there should merge into this beautiful landscape. So that's uh, my first reaction. And then after we build a building, I also want to merge the building uh, into the hor horizon. So when people approach the building, they feel, oh, this is a continue from the ground and they can approach it uh, freely and they can really interact with the building. They can climb the building, they can walk around it on the, on the facade so on. So it's a very interactive way for people to understand uh, the nature, uh, the environment right. there. Um, yeah, it's very different. Um, in this whole process, actually, human is uh, absent, right? Because I, I see the landscape uh, there. Those landscape, I suppose, has been there forever. Right? It's like a billions of years ago, was like that. So this is my reaction to it. But sometimes, for example, there's a kindergarten I did in, um, in Japan. That was a totally uh, my reaction to the family who building this kindergarten. It's a, it's a small family with the father, son, their kids, and uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, <laughs> in the kindergarten. It's a very emotional yeah. discussion. Uh, it's very harmony process. I, I don't have a one way to work, you know. It's just, sometimes it's very abstract understanding about the place, about, uh, about the, um, the environment. Sometimes it's about the human being. Sometimes um, maybe it's about the history. You know, when, when, I, when I do something in Beijing, oh, I see this city um, in front of me was uh, created 100 years ago. Right. So, so every time I try to express myself, I remind myself, you have to be low key. You have to be, right. you have to be part of it. You have to, you know, what about the thousand years later when people look at what you do, you know, this should be continued history. So it's a, only I think when you, when you uh, create something, uh, when you are very emotional about the, the, uh, uh, the subject, the result could be uh, emotional. That's what uh, I feel. And it's, Great. So there's a no fixed logic um, to do things. Great. Awesome. Thank you. So I will ask another question from one of our followers. Uh, and also, I would like to remind our followers that if you want to ask uh, Ma any question, please write it into the question box down there. I will, I'm exploring them. I will ask them from dear Ma. Okay. Anish, Anisa Shah asks, what do you think this can distinguishes you from other architects? Um, I don't know. 
<laughs> yeah, tough <laughs> question. <laughs> no, that that's not a question for me, actually. Right? <laughs> that's that's a question for critics. I no, I I think. Uh, I, I think uh, it takes time. I don't know. I don't. Everyone, you know, for you, it takes time to 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 be uh, very different. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's that's my my experience. I, and um, because it, it's a journey, and architects is a journey. I, I sometimes, you know, you have a great work when you're a student. You can be. You can never be better than that <laughs> because, <laughs> because maybe that moment was uh, you can truly find something inside you that's so unique. Yes. Right? And then later, when you work in this profession, especially when you compare yourself with other people, <laughs> that means that means you're already affected by other people, right? Right. So, um, so how can you find the truly you inside of you? That's the, uh, how to, how can you find uh, a deeper you? Or how can you know how to express that? So as one of the pioneers in architecture, how do you think artificial intelligence will evolve, evolve when combined with architecture and with the current tools that we have in our hands with computational and in the future artificial intelligence, uh, how, what, what will be their role in architecture profession? I don't trust AI. I don't, I don't know. I don't want <laughs> them to replace us, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but, you know, a lot of professional trainings we, we had in the school, well, those knowledges, or experiences, well, actually, they could be replaced, right? Um, so what, now we're dividing uh, the architecture in many, many uh, different professions, and uh, they're, they're more detailed. So which part can be, <laughs> is, is, a, is a key. Um, I think la less uh, technical part, maybe right. the fun part, I mean, we do sketches, you know, we don't know what we do next. Sometimes when we sketch, you know, it's a right. sketch, you, you do like instant from what do you think, what do you feel? And you, you could do totally different things and, and surprise yourself sometimes. So that's, that's very fun. And that cannot be, I don't think that can be learned by AI. And uh, so, so what I think is the artistic part, like the, um, if, for example, the chess, right? the chess, if we think of oh, the winning, losing is a result, of course, machine can, can win you. But uh, if the beauty for this game is not about the winning, <laughs> maybe you find, uh, <laughs> you know, different the happiness. Uh, right. Same for art. So what's the, what's the art? What's the value of art? Right. So, so you, a machine can can create a famous painter's work, can can copy it, or can even exactly. learn, can can repeat, can 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 do something that you feel belongs to the same artist. But uh, but artists never want to repeat. You know that's uh, so. Sometimes they they create something they totally new. For exactly. architects, that's the same. You know what? So maybe architects in the future should uh, be more artistic and more intellectual. You know, we we talk about the thinking, the philosophies, and the and the, and the life, and the, you know, art, and uh, talking about ideal cities, about uh, about ideal architecture, about ideal space, and then we let machine to AI to to help us. You know, the, the, right. we always use the new tools. You know, we use the rulers <laughs> at the very beginning, and then we use computers. And there's always a discussion about it. But, uh, exactly. yeah, but I think a better tool can really help us to better work.
Great. I'll ask a, a very specific question. Uh, what is architecture? Architecture? Oh. Yes. For me, it's uh, the way of communication with the people. Um, like I said, I feel doing architecture is like uh, making a movie and you're the director behind it. Uh, you're, you're, you're finding yourself and the learning from your experience and then you express that through your work. And the work, of course, is useful. It's a functional, it's a, it's a space, uh, it's a material. But at the same time, it's a story. It's, um, it's an emotional environment that really link to people who use it, who are using it. And uh, when they're using it, sometimes they hate it, right? <laughs> sometimes they right. like it, they love it. <laughs> and uh, they will interact with uh, the creator, who is the architect. And this interaction can last very long. Uh, even after we die, right? We, when, when we look at those great architecture, um, those architects already passed away, but we can, we know their, their life, you know, they, we, we, we understand what they want to tell us. And this space and this architecture keep inspiring um, young people uh, like us. I think, uh, I think this is really interesting. Um, to to think about how we talk to the people in the future, right? What we can bring to them, you know. We know that we we learn the history, we look, we learn the past. What's our value and the understanding about those? How can we bring this to the new generations? I think that's very interesting. Right. Are there any architects that you admire their works? Yeah, I don't many. know, before or <laughs> these days? Oh, I like uh, um, Antonio Gaudi, of course. Everyone loves him. Uh, Gaudi yeah. is, a, is a genius. And um, um, I like Oscar Niemeyer. Um, I like Zaha and the Frank Gehry. Frank Gehry is amazing. I think this, I, I like all these people doing curve. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're, they're crazy. I mean, they're, I mean, we, we, um, there, there is a possibility we didn't have them. Yeah. If we don't have them, our city and architecture still, we, we still have those things. But it, it just feel you, you're, you're, you're losing something. Uh, you, you don't have this a beautiful space uh, and um, um, inspiring um, structures around us. That would yes. be a pity. So I think sometimes I think uh, um, um, an individual um, should really cherish what I inside of you, right? So you can really bring that out. It's not just for yourself, it's also for generations and, and the people around you. It's really people looking for this. I, sometimes I, I, I make a joke, I said, if one day the, the aliens come into the <laughs> earth and they, they try to uh, destroy the earth or, or, or maybe protect something, they do want to do research. <laughs> so what uh, architecture they will keep? Yeah. <laughs> Inspiring, right. great. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. So uh, uh, I, I want to ask another question from one of our followers. Uh, I think it's a good question. Okay. What is the key point to get potential clients? Oh, <laughs> that that cannot be a question. You know, if that's, <laughs> that's a, question, a key. Yeah, that's a, the key. The key is you cannot care about this. I mean, I think, uh, but for my experience, the only way is to uh, show what you do, and uh, letting those people finding you. Um, because they, if they see what you do, they think that's special, and they like what you do, they will find you. 
Maybe that only one person, like uh, Antonio Gaudi's kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's only one person in the world that he will find you. <laughs> but if you try to say um, convince many people, you will feel very um, um, hard. You will you will, you know because exactly. because it's just not possible, right? It's not possible for everyone like liking you. Um, and you will, when you consider this question, you you will want to modify yourself and uh, try to <laughs> satisfy other people. That that's a, exactly the, the starting point of uh, danger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, which one of your projects you like the most? I did uh... like 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 <laughs> which one of your projects are. Uh, very close to the architecture that you are always having in mind and uh, it's very close to you. It's you. Uh, which one presents exactly you? Uh, last year, I finished one project in Japan. It's a, a cave. <laughs> it's a <laughs> renovation of a concrete cave. What, it was a part of uh, this art uh, festival. Uh, they normally have having artists doing this uh, land art. So I make this a cave out of uh, steel. So it's, a, so it's a reflecting surface. I also draw the water to the, from the river into the cave uh, on the ground. So that, right. that's, we call this a uh, uh, turn of light. So it's uh, all about the natural light. And uh, people who go there have to take off their shoes and uh, walk uh, on this uh, water surface. And you will feel the people are floating uh, in this uh, thin horizon in between the, I mean, the sky and the, the reflected sky. sky. So, so it's, a, it's a very poetic uh, space. And they, you, you feel you did nothing, right? It's a, it's a space, it's emptiness. For me, it's a, uh, it's more me. You know, I mean, when we, when I, when I do project in the city, I sometimes I, I'm being more critical, because I, I see these ugly buildings around us, <laughs> really, <laughs> and sometimes I, I have to be stronger than those. <laughs> so it's, it's a, it's a different uh, me. Um, but uh, when you're um, dealing with the history or nature, I feel I'm more calm. And uh, but I also want to see a different angle of nature because, because that scene, that scenery you create, it's very different from the, the mountains, the uh, rivers uh, that are around. So it's, uh, it's, um, it's a quite a spiritual. Yeah, great. Uh, that's very inspiring. And thanks for sharing your uh, these kind of like magnificent uh, experiences and your thoughts about architecture and your projects. That uh, they are real, really inspiring. And uh, as closer with all those experiences that you had about architecture and your career, your uh, everything. What what kind of advice would you like to share with students, young architects, young professionals? Uh, what what would be your advice? Uh, be yourself. <laughs> for, for, forget forget what the other people say. Um, yes. Um, yeah. I think uh, that that was the advice I I took from my professor. And I had to go to school. I I look at this uh, all the masters and this uh, okay. And at the end, they should, you should forget everything you you you've heard from from the school. Well, that's a, that's a starting point. You forgetting is probably easy, but the finding what you believe takes longer time. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, but uh, that's a starting point. Um, um, trust yourself. Um, be sensitive um, to what's inside of you. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thanks for okay. sharing uh, all these knowledge sure. and thanks for accepting our interview request. Thanks for uh, <laughs> being in here and we really appreciate that. Is there any final words that you would like to share with our followers? 
Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. It's uh, my pleasure. Thank uh, you. It's very fun. Thank you. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.